Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Fiennes, and I'm my host, Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, are you introducing today's guest, or are you just going to discuss uh, what we're going to be talking about today? I'll drop the ball. We need to bring back some guests, but I quite like arguing with you. So um, we're going to do a debate. Should you gate your content, or should you not? So floor is yours. You can pick a side. Tell me which, and then we'll start from there. So, I, I mean, I wouldn't really pick a side, but I would no, say there's go. two different Whole concept of the episode. There's two different ways. Gated content is meant to generate leads and nurture the prospects of the marketing efforts. Well, ungated content is meant to increase your traffic. So, um, it depends what you are looking for. If you're looking for leads, you know, you might want to gate it. But if you're looking just for website traffic, you can ungate it. But I will say, um, you know, sometimes it's better if you want to get, if you got 50,000 people to a website traffic, or you got 10,000 people to fill out a form. I personally would probably still like the 10,000 people to fill out the form than the, you know, the 50,000 people that came to the website. That's me. So I think there's a, a purpose for both. And it all depends on what, um, what the marketing strategy is, but you know, you being in marketing, Ollie, um, you might actually disagree. I don't. Um, I would have liked to have chosen that side, so I'll have to take the opposite one, which is great fun. Um, yeah, but, but generally speaking, I would agree. If if I could have let's make it a hundred thousand website visitors a month, and if I had twenty five thousand um, webinar downloads or whatever it may be, like a form fill of some kind. Yep name and email address and it's a business address not a gmail um with my like conversion math on i take that because i can draw a line to conversion to uh we emailed them and they replied to calls booked to dollar value and deals closed much easier and then you can kind of prove and uh, well you can prove and improve that math and that cycle so i'm with that but for the purposes of the episode not being done within two minutes uh, I'm going to go the opposite side. So tell me, Mr. Sales Leader, if uh, if I gate everything and I just farm you leads and I obsess over that, I just focus completely on the here and now. I never build anything for the future. It's kind of like a, a talent pipeline. If I just make people sweat, they're probably not going to stick around too much. So if I work long term and I try and build the website traffic, what you can expect is maybe, let's guess at 1% to 2% people on the website go for a demo. I'm picking something out of nowhere. Out of 100,000 people, it's 1,000 people. Pretty good. That's straight demos. That's better than that's better than my webinar and my ebook, isn't it? So I think long-term, if I could take that and I can make it 110,000, 120,000, 130,000, 150, 200,000. And obviously, those are very big shifts. But if I get going, things snowball with SEO and that kind of stuff, I think the rest of it kind of all plays into itself. You know, Once you get to that point, You've got an email list of over a thousand new demos a month. Never mind the rest. So uh, I'm trying my very best here. But how, how do I do though? What, what, are we finding this difficult to argue with, or is this? Well, no, I mean, well, 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 my, my question. Well, well, I'll ask you a question. Why can't you have both? Why can't you have some of your content gated? That's a very exclusive to certain people, and some ungated. Like you know, for example, why when why can't you gate certain value and content that you have for your clients? and have the ungated for your prospects or people that come to the website. So then it says, okay, as part of becoming a client or uh, with our company, you get access to, you know, our SDR playbook, our email marketing playbook. For the most part, people do that. So that is the way. The, the only nuance would be the team bandwidth. So if, if I was to, for example, make a very hardcore play to long-term SEO, building the website traffic up astronomically, the bandwidth of the budget is spent on that, the headcount, the tools, the vendors, the suppliers, instead of the HubSpot, the time making the landing page, the time to get creative for an asset and promoting it and all those things. So to go like very hardcore one way or the other, that's the reason. But for the most part, you know, we do this. Pretty much every company I've ever seen does it. They have blogs, they have videos, they have a podcast, which is not gated, obviously. No one gates a blog ever. Please don't ever do that. But that, that's where the balance comes because if I need to produce X number of hundred leads or thousand leads a month, 
I probably put my eggs more in that basket. Whereas if it's a bit different and we're building for the longer term, I don't do that. So the, the only difference is the team bandwidth and where I put my resource. So, I mean, there's, there is one way that I do see the gated, like, you know, there's all these so-called influencers, big people that, you know, coaches, trainers, they don't just provide free content to everyone. They want you to sign up for a subscription. So this is more for businesses on content that you do for your business. Now, do you look at it differently, though, if you are, you know, an industry expert, an influencer that's trying to sell a training course or something, you know, you've already built that brand reputation with yourself. So you can gate it or would you give some ungated teasers? Like a lot of people give some ungated teasers and say, okay, click here. You can read the first five lines and then now you got to fill out this, your email to read the rest. How do you feel about that? That's good. Um, it, it always comes back to the, like how full is the calendar for the, I was about to say for the account executive, if you're working for yourself or a small team for you, hopefully, but, um, if let's say we have 10 SDRs here at Auto Close and Vanilla Soft, if they aren't doing anything, then give them everything and gate, gate things. You know, as, as whatever comes in, but email newsletter subscriber. If they've got nothing, they might as well talk to those people if they can. Versus if you're already busy, if you've already got a full calendar, if you already have quite a few clients, if you've already got a lot of enterprise deals coming in, maybe you don't necessarily want to gate like everything and you can leave that for a let's build brand. And it becomes demand, or if I was American, demand, then that's the way of doing it. So I think it massively depends on, not enough people really say it, it's what the calendar looks like rather than, because I can come up with, let's say for Q1, my objectives for key reviews, my KPIs, I could just say, finger in the air, 2,000 leads, that's my goal, or 150, that's my goal. They both sound just as good as each other. What do they mean? So it's about the calendar that you're filling in the end, not necessarily... The volume really so here is an idea and i want to see what you think about this one say you have a four-part series a one-month four-part series you have you have week one week two week three week four and each one's gonna uh, add to the next one and what you do is you give ungated week one week two week three so you get them really into it oh my god the story is great i've, I've you know i've read the first you know two periods of the hockey game you know, first 60 minutes of the soccer game or football game, but then gate, but, but number four is, is put your email in to read the last one. So you have teaser, teaser, te teaser, gated to try and get that lead at the end. How do you feel about that strategy? Really like the logic. You've got me invested and now I want to go through the gate to get the last thing. Doesn't work if it's not a big enough deal. That's the only problem. Okay. So let's say if um, if I run a consulting firm, just me and the, the audience that I have and that type of thing, if I do that, a handful of people come to each one and then probably a couple will fill it out in the end. So you've got to have like a mass, uh, a, a, like a herd following for this going on. It doesn't really matter if, you know, if Salesforce does that, I, I always pick them as the example. If they do the three-part webinar or the four-part, whatever it is, 100,000 people go to each one. 80,000 people probably go through the fourth if they have to do the form fill. It's if you can get that volume, even if you get 1,000 to it. But if you can't get past like 100, it's kind of not worth it. You'd probably just be better off doing actual, do, do the fourth one, but do it at the start, pretty much, I would say. It's about yeah. the volume that you've got. Yeah. Like I'm just thinking like, I, I know for, you know, for example, you did a big a growth month, which got thousands of leads. And you, do, you got the leads up front. But I look at it like, okay, well, you could do a growth month thing where it's free content. You don't need to put your emails in. You know, you have, you know, 10 speakers, but the 11th one, you know, Gary V, Tony Rum. You have someone huge, but you only get that last one if you put your email. So I've loved everything you've done, Ollie, for this growth month. But I can't listen to that last week of growth month without actually putting my email in. So I think that kind of strategy kind of works just simply because – you know, you've got people into it. I know, for example, I've talked about this story many times with AutoClose when we started. I got a landing page of, I think it was you know, four or 500 people that want to, that felt like they built the platform with us. And all I did was I sent one email at the end saying the platform is ready, let's book a demo and they would do it right then and there. So I think it's the same thing. So I think there is a way to do gated and ungated. Um, I think fully gated, if you don't have that reputation, you don't have that branding, your company is not well known, you're just not gonna get people to download it. 
Um, or you're going to get people to give fake emails because I know I have one email address that I use to fill out all my forms. So I have an email address that I use to – if I want to read something, I just don't want them to keep spamming me after. I'll give them that email. Let them send everything in that one email. Um, but I do think there's a time and a place. But as I said – as you said, mentioned earlier, I think the numbers have to make sense because, again, you made a very good point. If you have 100,000 website visits and I'm getting 25,000 – 20,000 leads or 20,000 leads, but I can increase that 100,000 to a million – website visitors, and I'm still only having 25,000 leads, it might be better to actually get the website traffic. Um, so you have to look at the numbers, you have to analyze the numbers and look at the conversions. But there is, there is always, um, I know there's two sides to this, this debate, and that's for, that's for sure. You, the idea that you had where you have a three or four part thing, um, it's an interesting one. I haven't really seen anyone in B2B do it. The only like good example I have to draw on is that there's a group of YouTubers in the UK where they have such a incredibly big following. I'm talking tens of millions plus, maybe even a hundred million, something like that between them. And then they have a group thing together, a group brand. So it's probably over a hundred mil easily. They get probably like, if they post a YouTube video, it's probably a million views and they mostly post daily, all six of them. Yeah, They have a podcast, which is free. They also have a paid one. So like think of a Patreon or something like that. They get, as you said, the bigger guests on the paid one. They don't really talk about it too much. It's kind of like an ad at the end of their videos, just as like a subliminal. We've got, like like you said, Gary V, Tony Robbins on the paid one. They don't have any guests on their own stuff though. They just do whatever they want. They'll have a topic, they'll sit and talk about it. And that's the thing. So for us, the, the same translation would be, this is the zero to $5 million podcast. It's me and you, we have a debate. We talk about any topic. Ad roll comes in and it's the zero to $5 million plus yeah. For example. And then then we've got, you know, Robbins and Vaynerchuk and, you know, God knows who else. And then it's like, I don't know, five or a month. Yeah. Something like that. But that makes no sense at all because for us, if we were to get Tony Robbins on, I'm making like a thousand clips of that. I'm re-releasing it. We're, we're making the best out of that. That's true. Because that would do wonders to our audience. So it's it stages and sort of horses for courses. Yeah. But a great idea. Worth a go. Yeah. Okay, well, it looks like uh, this is going to be a rather quicker episode, but it's a great debate out there. I'm definitely trying to know should you get your content or not. But I want to thank everyone for listening to this episode. Um, as, you, as you guys know, we try to sometimes bring on guests. We try and just have conversations, um, discuss different stuff that's going on in the market. So uh, if you enjoyed the show, don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever you're listening from and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode next week. Ollie, once again, thank you so much and have a great day, everyone.